Hey everyone. Um, hopefully you remembered that you have to take the math star test in my class for the first time of this school year. Um, and right off the bat, I just want to make sure that everyone has this paper here that says show your work assignment star. Um, if, if you haven't passed these papers out yet or nobody picked them up, then let's pause the video for a moment and just make sure everybody has this. Um, okay. So I'm going to hope you do have this or you grabbed it, whatever. Um, these are going to be your how points for you for the day. Like your classwork and participation is going to come from this. Um, there's 16 boxes, eight on the front, eight more on the back. And then there's a little special area that says like extra workspace. Um, the idea of this is for you to show your work on the star test. Um, the star test, it it's different for different people and they also change it every year, but usually the number of questions is between 28 and 36. Um, I'm asking that you show your work on this paper for 12 of the questions. I know there's 16 boxes. I'm only asking you to do 12. Um, now, what do I mean by show your work? Some questions on the star are really good questions to be able to show your work. Like maybe you need to multiply something or divide something, or you got to do something with a fraction or something. Now, when you get to a question like that, I want you to use the box just like you would scratch work. It does, you don't have to copy the question. Um, just show me that you're writing some calculations or something to help you finish finish the question. And what that means could, is like up to you. There's a lot of freedom in like what I expect to see in these boxes. I just need to see that you're writing something. Don't worry about whether the box number matches the question number on the test. So for example, maybe your first question on the star test is something that doesn't even make any sense to write scratch work for. Like maybe it's like, which one of these shapes is a triangle? And it shows you a triangle, a square and a circle or whatever. Like you don't really need to draw a triangle and a square and a circle on this paper to figure that out. So, so you wouldn't show your work on that one. But maybe question three is one where you have to multiply a couple of decimal numbers or something like that. Okay, so you write that out and you you do that multiplication on paper, right? Um, and even though it's question three on your star test, maybe it's the first one you've done on your paper. So it's in the question one box. Don't put it in the question three box just because it's question three on the test. Just start with box number one. So by the time you're later on in this, you might be on box eight but you're on question 20 on your test, right? It doesn't matter. Those don't have to match up at all. Just show me some scratch work in 12 boxes for any 12 questions along the way. And if you want to fill up more than 12 boxes, you want to use all 16, great. You want to use some extra space around the edges or the back part where it says extra workspace, great, do it. You need an extra piece of scratch paper and you want to staple it to this, great, go ahead. Either way, I just need everybody to use scratch paper and you should not have any form of a calculator. No smartwatches, none of the calculators from the from the bin right here next to me. Um, yeah, no, no calculators on the star test. The whole point of this is that I want you to slow down and actually do some scratch work while you're taking the star test. Um, I know that there are some students that will kind of rush through it or they don't wanna bother having to write something so they'll figure it out in their head. But the thing is, is it doesn't matter how amazing you are at calculations or how great of a mathematician you are. We will all make fewer mistakes and do better when we take our time, slow down and put pencil to paper. And so I'm basically requiring uh, you to do that. If you want your four how points for the day, you will show me scratch work in at least 12 of these boxes, okay? Um, when you finish the star test, this paper with 12 of the boxes having scratch work in them um, will go, I believe I put a box on the front counter, like the front center of the front counter. There should be a box with a little sign on it that says like finished star work sheets or something like that. You just put this in that box. And then if the substitute teacher could kind of pile those up, up at the end of each period and um, clip them together and put them on the shelf right next to where the document camera, camera is. You should see shelves that say first, third, fourth, and fifth periods and just put them there. Um, if a student wants to show the substitute exactly what I'm talking about, um, if they need that, that'd be great. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go through a slideshow with you and talk about the star test a little bit more, and then you'll have the rest of the period to finish it, which I really hope is enough time because it's a block period. You should have plenty of time. Um, 
Let's go back to the beginning. Okay, so I want you to think of the STAR test as a snapshot of your learning. We want to get an idea of where you are as an overall math learner, not just a math learner in my class by answering quizzes and tests about the things that I'm teaching you. The STAR test asks you questions about things you learned in third and fourth grade, and maybe things that you won't learn until ninth, ninth, 10th, or 11th grade. And it gives us an idea of where you are as an overall math learner. Um, now, for some people that could be stressful for different reasons. For some people, they stress out because they wanna score 9 million um, and they're, they're worried about every single question and possible point. Um, I appreciate that. I appreciate wanting to do your best. Um, I would encourage you to, um, to not stress so hard though, you know, um, getting a getting a 9 million is just about as good as getting a 10 million and in the end the the that high of a star test score isn't worth super stressing out about in my opinion if you're on the other end where maybe you're a little bit worried that you're going to score kind of on the low end um i would also encourage you to not stress too much um getting a lower score on the star test is not the end of the world um most most of the time what people are concerned about is whether or not getting a lower score on the STAR test will um, cause them to be placed in a different math class, like for example, a math support class. Um, it is a possibility. That is one of the things that we use to determine which students should be in those classes, but it's not the only thing we use to determine that. Um, and one bad STAR score is not usually enough to get a student into that sort of class. Um, so if you're if you're worried about the star test, I would encourage you to realize that a little bit of stress on something like this is a good thing because sometimes a little bit of stress can encourage us to do our best. Um, but a lot of stress is probably not healthy or not worth it in this case of this star test. The star test is not for a grade in my class. Now you can and will earn or not earn how points by doing your 12 questions on this thing here, right? But as far as like your score on the test itself will not affect your grade in my class um, in any way at all. Um, I really hope that you actually do try your best on the test though. Um, what has happened at some points in the past is a student just kind of doesn't care about the STAR test. And so they just kind of click through and just answer whatever. And then they got a really, really low score because of that. And Everybody's like, whoa, what's going on with this student? Like, why'd they score that low? Like, we should call home and ask them what's going on. Or maybe they need to be in this class or maybe they need this tutoring or whatever. And and then maybe later we find out that, oh, they just didn't try. They were clicking random answers. And then the student just winds up having to take it again so we can see what they can actually do. And so um, you can save yourself all that trouble by just making sure that you do your best this first time around, please. Um, but if you do come to a question that you're stuck on, um, my advice would be, now this says give your best guess here on the slideshow. I don't like using the word guess. Um, figure out your best thought or your best estimate uh, um, what the answer would be and go with that and move on after a couple minutes. Don't, don't stay stuck on any given question for more than two or three minutes would be my advice. Um, the question will ask you things maybe that you don't know or that you've never seen before. This is what we call an adaptive test. If you keep answering everything right, it's going to adapt up. It's going to see what's the toughest thing or most advanced thing that I can ask this student before I can finally stump them. Um, and so you might see words you've never seen before. You might see symbols you've never seen before. You might see a, just a type of question you've never seen before. If I were there with you in the room today and those things popped up, I would remind you, that I cannot answer any questions about those things. And I would expect you to not ask your neighbors any questions about those things, nor can you ask any of the adults that are in the room with you about those things today. Because the whole point is the STAR test wants to see how much do you know? And if you get to a type of question you've never seen before, and then you ask someone like maybe of me, if I was there, uh, oh, what does this symbol mean to do? And then I explain it to you and you answer it right, the test didn't learn what you knew at the start of the test. The test learned what I knew because I told you, and that's pointless. We're not here to learn what I know. We're not here to learn what your neighbor knows. We're not here to learn what the substitute teacher that's with you today knows. We're here to know what you know. And so you can't ask for any help of any kind. 
Um, on the other side, it, it will adapt down. Um, if you're getting a few questions wrong, it will try to uh, give you easier things to see what you're able to get right. Um, yeah, I think we can move on from there. So in order to log in, hopefully you haven't done this already yet, um, you'll go to your Clever account and you'll sign in using Google. And then you'll find the Renaissance logo. And this is an old slideshow. So the Renaissance logo used to be green and blue. Um, it's now red, I believe. Click on Star Math, select me as your teacher. And when we practiced logging into the star recently, um, my name wasn't available in that list of selections. It should be now, I believe it's fixed. So select me if you see me. Now, if it's not fixed for some reason and my name's still not there, it's okay, it's not a big deal. Just select one of your teachers. Um, if it asks you if you're in your school, say yes. That's an old thing from COVID where like some students were taking their tests at school and some were taking it home. Um, but now everybody's at school. So just click yes, I'm in my school. And then it will ask you for the monitor password. That's admin, uh, A-D-M-I-N. You also need that monitor password admin if you were to take a break or if you don't finish the test in time. Um, if you get to the end of this class period, and you haven't finished the star test, then you would hit stop test up in the, uh, I believe it's in the upper right, um, and then click resume later. And then it'll ask you for that monitor password again, ADMIN. Like I said earlier, you're getting the whole block period, of, obviously after I'm done talking here. Um, I really hope that's enough time for everyone that's present today to finish. If you don't, then you're gonna get pulled out of one of your classes next week to finish, which Let's try to avoid that if we can, but it's not. But it's also not the biggest deal. If you do need more time, you can have more time. Um, after the test, put your star worksheet uh, in the box at the front counter. You can I, you can put it there when you finish, or if it, at the end of the period, whatever. But make sure I get your star worksheet. Make sure your name's on it. In fact, let's everybody put our names on our star worksheets right now. Right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause for like I'm gonna stop talking for a few seconds. Everybody, you should have a pencil because you because you have to write names on your star worksheets right now, please. If you notice your neighbor's not listening and they're not paying attention to this video and they're not putting their name on their star worksheet, tell them. Everybody put your name on your star worksheet. Okay, then after you put your star worksheet in the box, um, you can do your homework. Your new homework is Desmos 7103 online. Um, it may or may not be written on the board because I'm not there to write there, but you will find it in Google Classroom and it should just be in your activities list if you go directly to Desmos 7103. Also, if there's any other Desmoses you haven't finished, maybe a classwork one that you didn't get very far in um, or the one the homework that's due today, 7102. If you have any of those to finish, finish them. Um, if you have work from another class you need to do that's like quiet and isn't gonna be distracting or something, I don't know what, sort of things you're doing from your other classes. Um, you can do that quietly. Uh, if you'd like to read, you can do that quietly. If you'd like to draw, you can get supplies from the tables over by the front door and, and do that quietly. The main thing is this word quietly. Um, while people are still taking the test, it must remain absolutely silent in this room. Everybody has the right to a quiet, like good thinking environment to do their best on the star test uh, within. And even if like most people are done with the star test, because people are going to finish at different times, some of you speed racers are going to be done in 20 minutes and other people are going to need the whole period. But even if most people are done and there's just a few people left taking the star test, that room needs to stay absolutely silent. So those last few people who might even be a little stressed out because they're like, oh, I still got three more questions and class is almost over. They especially need it quiet at that time. Um, and so, yeah, this room should stay quiet for the whole period. I'm going to ask the substitute teacher to leave me a note with any names of anybody who wasn't respecting the fact that that room needs to stay quiet for the entire star test. And if your name gets left for me like that, that's going to be a phone call home. Um, you know, I'm, please don't do that. I, I don't want to spend my whole day making a bunch of phone calls, but if you're disrupt, disrupting the star test environment, that, that will be a, a phone call home. Please, please know that. All right. Um, I think that's everything I got to say. I think it's time for you to start logging into your Clever and going to Renaissance and doing your absolute best on this test and um, have a good three-day weekend after. See you.